pesky is this Texas Tech offense? I don't know, pesky, explosive is probably a better word. I mean, they do a really good job uh, pushing the ball down the field. They have a good run game complement, I think, with it. You've got playmakers all over the place. I think they do a great job uh, creatively with the things that they do. They're, they're a really good offensive football team. Looks like they do a lot of RPO uh, zone read. Yeah, I, they do a lot of things to get the ball to the quarterback's hands quickly and get the ball to guys in space. And I think that's kind of the the, uh, the MO. And then they complement that with a lot of down the field uh, shots. So it's not like you're going to be able to sit on a whole bunch of things. You got to be uh, got to be kind of ready for everything. Were you guys very far out of your run fits last week? Uh, Early in the game, no. Uh, late in the game, uh, I would say not very far off. I think we had a couple of things where, uh, you know, a guy might have gotten cut out of a gap and we didn't make it right. Um, uh, there were a couple of times when uh, um, maybe we were in uh, some suboptimal calls uh, where we maybe were a little shorter in there than we wanted to be. Um, but uh, no, I think uh, um, some, some of those things that happened to us last week are easily correctable. Can you describe how fun it is or maybe how big of a challenge it is for you to go against an offense that's predicated on running the ball like Oklahoma one week and then switch to an air raids game? Like yeah, I wish I, I wish we'd go against somebody that wasn't very good once in a while. <laughs> um, no, it's it's uh, that's the Big 12. I mean, I, we knew that uh, when we when we came here that this is this is Big 12. And I, I think that uh, for a, for a, a time there was a resurgence of defense in the Big 12. And I think there's still some very good defenses, but um, I think the offenses have struck back, so to speak. I mean, just the, the creativity that some of these teams have nowadays is, is incredible. And sometimes it's difficult with these new teams. And, and then it was the same case last week for us to really know what their identity was because they didn't have a lot of tape. And I think uh, Texas Tech is similar to that. You know, I know obviously the things that they did at Western Kentucky, but um, you know, it's a new new group of personnel that they have down at Texas Tech, and so it's uh, it's a challenge to get these guys early in the year. More plus than you wanted, and 34 points. But how much solace can you take from how you performed on third and fourth down? I, I think guys just played really hard. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you're you're absolutely right. I think the, the the big takeaway is we gave away some explosive plays that uh, that we haven't given away in in just some one on one situations, which we knew that that was going to be a a challenge going in. That was the plan: is we were going to have some one on ones, and and we had to win. And there was a couple that we didn't. Um, and then you know they had a. a really two series at the end of the game where we were very conservative uh, with a lead that we just kind of uh, uh, allowed them to get plays down the field. I don't want to say allowed them, but um, but uh, again, the guys just played their hearts out. And, um, you know, if we play with that kind of an energy and intensity, I think we're going to be hard to beat. OU likes to root. Obviously, OU likes to go really fast. They went really fast against you guys. Texas Tech likes to go fast. They ran over 100 plays against Texas. Is there any kind of advantage after going fast against Oklahoma and then now you turn around and play a team like Tech? Like it, it, you, you bet. It helps. Uh, it helps to do that a couple weeks in a row. You know, I, I think that, uh, um, you know, we, we were prepared last week for Mach 1 and, and we got it at times. And I don't think our guys, I don't think there were any snaps where our guys weren't aligned, which was a huge key to the game for us. You know, we thought if we got our, our feet in the ground and got aligned, we'd have a chance. And, um, you know, we've kind of continued that prep into this week because, yeah, 109 plays or, Whatever it was against Texas, 106 against Houston. That's uh, those are big, big numbers. What are the main things you stress with uh, the defense after week when you do give up more passing yards than you wanted? Uh, just technique. I think you know. I think we we uh, um, had some technique errors that that probably cost us. I think we had some um, early in the game. I think we had some communication errors uh, that we got rectified as things went on, but. Uh, you know, it's just fundamental football. I mean, I don't think there's anything uh, earth shattering to, I mean, you can point at every play and, and say, this is what happened, this is what happened, this is what happened. It's not like we don't have a rationale or answers or, uh, you know, and things uh, things happen throughout the course of a game. You know, sometimes uh, a guy does make a mistake and we're just trying to uh, work as best we can to prevent those before they happen. I think uh, Coach Kleiman hinted at it, but you, get, you expect a lot of plays on defense. Does that mean more snaps possibly for someone like Uso Sayamala who's kind of coming along for you? Yeah, yeah, I think across the board. I think that uh, Uso had a, had a, had a, had a, he's developing so much better each week. I mean, he's, he is uh, maybe one of the more talented people we, we, we really have. I mean, he's, he's something special. Um, it's hard to take Eli Huggins off the field, but um, but yeah, he, he, he'll have to be in the rotation. We're going to have a deeper rotation at defensive end. We're hoping Nate Matlack can give us some snaps this week. Um, we're going to have a deeper rotation at linebacker everywhere. 
And I think we're okay with that. I think that that's kind of the way that we practice. We, we distribute our reps in practice fairly evenly between the ones and the twos. So it's not like these, uh, these younger guys or these other guys are not getting some of the reps or don't understand the principles. They just haven't done it as much in games. And so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of faces out there that you potentially could see. Coach, you guys played substitution chess a little bit against <laughs> Oklahoma. Um, when you have a team that goes fast like Texas Tech, is there a coach that's designated to watch for those substitutions or just kind of walk us through that process? Yeah, we, we do. We uh, I mean, that's within the within the rules of, uh, you know, if they sub, they give us an opportunity to sub. And um, so we, we try to do that to uh, uh, sometimes we just need to get people off, you know, and then other times we, we do that to try to, um, you know, maybe we're, we're trying to match their personnel. You know, it's not always a, a, a gadget when we do it. And then, you know, um, but we, uh, we, we we're, we're not trying to be unethical with that stuff. I mean, we, we do it and, um, you know, yeah, we're obviously in tune to when they when they sub. Of guys in this game, and some young guys got really competitive snaps. They lost some battles, and you won the game. I mean, is there anything that can replace that? That's awesome. You know, I mean, I'm looking at the last two series of the game, and you know, VJ Payne played almost every snap as a true freshman, and and uh, Omar Daniels was playing significantly, and uh, that's 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 a valuable valuable experience in that environment to get those guys off and running. Do you continue to see progress from the back end of the defense, and how has that manifested itself? We are, yeah. I, I think Kobe Savage is getting so much more comfortable. Josh Hayes. I mean, they, you know, when people forget those guys are really four games into what they do. You know, they 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 play with the speed of older guys, but they're really just still learning. And so, the more comp Josh Hayes has never even played safety until you know earlier this year. So it's just, um, yeah. Every every week we're getting stronger, we're getting better, and and that's just. Uh, it's, it's galvanizing to, to, you know, have some ups and downs and, and still get a victory. You briefly touched on it there about Kobe and the success he's had. Has his success <clears throat> early this season surprised you at all? No, because of how he goes about his, his business. I mean, he's just a, um, always doing extra, always um, trying to perfect his craft. Uh, doesn't surprise me at all. It's just his personality. Can you go into what – how important communication is, especially when you're playing a team that plays as fast as Oklahoma and Texas Tech. Yeah, and that's that was probably the biggest thing. That was a loud environment in Oklahoma, even when we were on defense, which we probably didn't expect as much. Um, so we had some uh, some issues, like I said early, uh, getting things all the way around, and uh, and it's no different here. I mean, when when we're here, it's loud and it's you know. Uh, so we 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 practice with noise um, most of the. Uh, uh, time throughout the week, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, we, we do that stuff with crowd noise so that we're emphasizing some of the nonverbal things that need to happen. Um, but yeah, when, if, we're, if, we're, if we're not on the same page, we're going to be in big trouble. What does Texas Tech do best when they're throwing the ball? Uh, I think because they have such big receivers, um, you know, they, they create some matchups down the field that uh, they draw a lot of pass interference penalties they, they, you know, on, on some 50-50 balls because of those guys are so physical at the top of their routes. Um, I think that uh, because they they are able to, to stress you vertically. Another thing that really scares you is quarterback scramble. You know, with uh, with with uh, Donovan Smith, and uh, I think that he is uh, as dangerous doing that stuff as he is throwing the ball. Knowing that Texas Tech here. likes to go for it on fourth down a lot, does that kind of play into your mindset at all throughout the game? That's the way college football is now. You know, I, I, the Texas Tech is not alone in that. I think there's a lot of teams that are doing that where. You know, it, it certainly plays into how you play third down. Uh, sometimes third downs um, uh, and fives are rundowns. They're base downs. And then sometimes, you know, third down and ones are, are shot downs, you know, and, and it's just a different uh, uh, kind of mentality that you have to have with third down. What kind of difference maker has Eli Huggins been? Oh, unbelievable. You know, and, and the things that you don't maybe see on the stat sheet of, of him just battling in there and, uh, is his leadership and the things that he does that way. But, you know, Oklahoma early in the game, you know, the very first series, uh, I think their plan, you know, they, they did a great job, Oklahoma, of, of climbing people up to the second level and getting on backers and, and that stuff as, as good maybe as I've ever seen. And I thought they, they found out pretty quickly that you're not going to be able to do that when, when, when Eli's in there and, and leave him alone on a center, you know. And, and just the fact that nobody's able to single block that guy allows us to do so much more.